Hi everyone, I'm Cheryl Gottschall and today I'm here with Peter Maxwell Slattery. And hi Peter. Hello, thank you for having us. <laughs> oh, thank, thank you for coming, yeah. Now you're currently touring Australia with James Gilliland and your partner Sorita Antaria. Mm -hmm. um, and we're looking forward to, uh, to hearing James uh, tomorrow night actually. You'll be going, travelling all along the coast and showing yeah. him Australia. Yeah. But you yourself, you're a, a music artist. You're, um, you've produced 16 music albums. You're an author of seven books. How do you get the time to do it all? I've got no idea. <laughs> I've got no idea. Sometimes it's like 16, you know, sometimes up to 20 hour days and I've got no idea how I do it. So, <laughs> Must yeah. be some, some a time distortion or something. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> I don't know how it works, but it, it happens. So I guess you just got to roll with it. Yes. And it's something arises I would rather knock it over as quick as I can rather than have it sit and linger in there until you know a later date so yeah yeah I don't know how I do it <laughs> now you were your experiences started when you were quite young yeah right? yeah and you were seeing um, what we call the typical grey types of beings from was it age 8 to 12 or something? yeah I pinned it down to the ages between 8 and 12 and I didn't even know that they were greys I didn't even see them as angels or demons I didn't know what the hell it was that I was experiencing and I didn't even realize this until later years in terms of I pinned it down to the ages between 8 and 12 because my mum and my stepfather had that house finished at that time because they built it and then I lived there up until 12 until I went to my father's home. And so that's the time period of age I can put it down to. Um, they weren't your typical grey but they almost, the way I've described it is like cigarette ash and you sort of dab it with your pinky finger, that sort of texture and it was more like a whitish mm -hmm. colour mm -hmm. effect. Mm -hmm. And I've seen them multiple times now in later interactions. I've even had like a portal open up and it shove its head through and then pull it back through and they're usually about five foot or seven foot. So the two sizes and they're completely um, conscious beings. They're not the robotic type or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And it was explained to me they sort of work for the council of the whole. Now I haven't had anything like Galactic Federation or things like that explained to me but more like councils. Mm -hmm. And that there is sort of like a collective thing going on and that those that aren't part of the uh, councils, you know, or, or collective, um, I don't know if it's benefits or they're just how things work, but there's just either you're with it or you're not. And there's still no sort of war in terms of if you're not with it, but they were shown to me to be um, beings that work for the council of the whole mm -hmm. and that for some reason they're easy to work through vibration so they sort of do certain jobs what they were doing with me I've still to this day got no idea it's almost like um, they come through at weird times like again a lot of this stuff happens when you least expect it but I think those experiences at a younger age were to let me know that something was going on that there's something to this reality and I'd wake up sometimes with them right here there was a few like two or three or three incidences I remember fully but it, like there was times when there was light around the curtains like as if there was a sun outside, it was that bright. And I didn't sort of think about this till later. Trippy thing later on after coming out, being public actually for a couple of years about my experiences, I'm at my mum's home one day showing her where some of this stuff used to take place because it was at the opposite end of this, I think it's a five bedroom, I oh know four bedroom home. And my brother just goes, yeah, they used to hold my hand and walk me on the craft too. Right. And I'm like, you bastard, we could have spoke, you know, he's, even now he's just, I know he's got a lot going on, but he hasn't been public or spoken about it. But I'm thinking, we could have talked about this, you know. Mm. We might not have any conclusions about mm. things, but we could have, you know, spoke about things. So he described pretty much the same thing. Um, so, you know, that's when things started, but I didn't really make much of it at the time. Again, I didn't think it was alien or demons or angels. Mm. I just didn't know what it was that I was waking up to. And mm. um, sometimes, you know, there was one time they appeared as Kirk Cobain. I could see it like the singer of Nirvana. Mm. And I started getting to it around that age and um, it was almost like a vibration thing to it where I could see Kirk Cobain but I could see this other thing as well. Mm. And I think it was just to ease me into it, I guess, mm. is the best way I can describe it. Right. What yeah. about your parents? How did they respond? Did you tell them at the time? Or? No, this is the thing. I just didn't even bother. But the thing is, anybody can talk to my parents and my parents just split up and got their own partners. and. Um, but they can tell you, I always said that this female spoke to me and she was always right with what I was telling them that was being said to me. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't like big prophecies like there's going to be an earthquake here or anything. It was almost like just outcomes and, and people. It was like a, I was always get, getting guided um, on certain things and I ended up being, or this being speaking through me would always be right. So that was sort of something. But 
people just sort of, you know, it's just people, because I am a hypo person, I'm very energetic, and no. people just think, yeah, <laughs> and people just think that's me, so, you know, I don't know, I, I just thought that, you know, that was that, but then later years, uh, my dad proofread some of the books, and he goes, like, he's very sceptical, you know, he's caught for 38, uh, yeah, 38 years, um, and he couldn't really, he didn't know what to do with it, and... Uh, since then, I've taken my mum out, and I don't even know how many crafts she's seen now. I was just told to go out one night, and she's had daytime sightings. But with my dad one time, for the first time in years, he said, you know, your brother's come around for peace, and my stepmom wasn't there. It was weird synchronicities of how this set up this night. And I was told by the one of the Syrians that I work with, Patma, this sort of feline-type energy that I work with, being said, just go over there, we're going to rock up. So I get there, go out the back, and we had a craft opinion. Dad didn't come in time, and like, getting told, just, just get him to come back out. And we had four crafts doing fantastic manoeuvres in the sky, and to this day, Dad's just like, I saw what I saw, I don't know what I saw. We had, mm -hmm. you know, high-flying jets going over, because you can tell the roots. It was in Albury, so everyone sort of knows what's what. So they've experienced stuff now. Mum's mm -hmm. had stuff like names whispered in her ear, and mm -hmm. nothing's there. Mm -hmm. um, but my parents know that there's, there's something going on, because they've seen the change in me from mm. um, when I was younger and I guess my hoodlum days to where I am now, and just, you can't change that quick and mm. be authentic about it. So I guess, you know, and Mary Rodwell said the same, that the proof is in the person, not mm. in the evidence sometimes, mm. it's how it's affected them and yeah. changed them. No, I agree, I yeah. agree. Now you had these experiences going on for for some years, mm. but it wasn't until age 12 when you saw your first UFO? Yeah. Right? Again, I moved to Dad's, it was, I can't tell if it was, I think it was later in that year um, when I was 12, so, you know, maybe November, December, something like that, and I had, you know, the Slurpee bottles that change colour when you put the, um, what, what, what's the other name for a Slurpee, you know, like the... Slushy? Slush, slush puppy, yeah. <laughs> I had one of those bottles that change colour when you put the, mm -hmm. the juice into it, and I was walking down Dick Road, which came off Cheyenne Drive where my dad lived, and it went onto the Hume Freeway, and it was a corner service station there. Mm -hmm. And I think I was at the back of uh, the Siesta there, which is like a five-star Mexican resort. And to slightly to my right was just the only way I can describe it. And to this day, I've seen the object the last couple of years, and mm -hmm. I know it is around three times the size of a football field. I can guarantee mm -hmm. it. this thing's mm -hmm. huge. It cut out the front of the hill. Mm. Now it looked like when you're doing weights, if you got a weight off the end of the weight bar and put it sideways, uh, sideways it was like a matte dark grey. Mm -hmm. I couldn't see any sort of like definitive texture on, you know, grooves or anything like that. But it went until out of view and to this day I just don't know how nobody else had, whether somebody else saw that object or not. Again, I was 12. Uh, I didn't, again, I didn't tell my dad about it because I'm just thinking they're going to think I'm... Um, you know, that's this Pete. Mm. They did it on a lot of things, and I don't know why, but it um, it built me up later on, I guess. And but you know, I've got evidence now and witnesses and all that sort of thing. But that was when um, I still didn't know what to think about that either. So mm -hmm. you know, at that time, it was just like oh, I saw a UFO. I'm not really thinking mm. little green men from wherever or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And because of your age too, you may not have been thinking that at the time. Yeah, I just, like, what the hell was that, yeah, you know? Yeah. It was amazing. It was absolutely amazing, yeah. So, have you actually ever been on an ET craft? Yeah, I've been on different types of crafts, but it's it's weird to explain in terms of... See, I was quiet for a long time about this, and then I heard a Native American talk about it, and it was exactly what I thought with a lot of the experiences, that you're not being pulled to other star systems, though they do exist, and there's different vibrations at those star systems throughout the whole cosmos, but it was more like the craft will land on you, vibrate you into whatever frequency they're in. So you're really going nowhere, you're just swapping frequency. It's mm. like you're on, right now we're on channel seven, and then if you flick of the switch, you're going to channel nine. Mm. You're still occupying really the same space, but your mm. time, or whatever you reference for time, though that's an illusion has changed. Mm. So when I've been on some of these these crafts, um, there's been one that's like a whitish blue light and it was a disc and I could like if I defocus off the ground again I don't know how I perceive this because some of these experiences I'm not in the human body though sometimes I am um, but if I defocus how, I, how I'm perceiving the floor of this craft of this craft everything was like a whitish blue light and it was just made out of it and you can see definition this was a disc I could see the roof of my house and this was during the day when I started a meditation session because when my life changed I was meditating like eight sometimes 12 hours a day, I, I, my life totally changed and I started to go into this not knowing why and I started to do remote viewing courses and, and do, doing that sort of thing. But um, everything, even the other beings, they're light beings 
humanoid sort of form and there'll be a group collective consciousness and the craft is created by thought. Um, and then there's other times I've been on crafts which are a different, more aqua blue, almost like your top but a little bit more light blue. And But there would be physical objects like a grey metal chair, but I knew in my head that that was a projection. That was actually, in a way, reality, but it was pre like created through whatever form that I'm trying to understand because everything's consciousness. Light, sound and matter is all different manif manifestations of consciousness from my understanding, but um, a lot of the crafts have seemed to be made out of light and some you know mainly blue light that i've been on i've seen these weird brown grays on some of them then again i've seen ones that are like a weird between mushroom and mother pearl and i've talked to other people about this i can't say it's not either one but there's that texture to it um and then there, i've been in these what i surmise are crafts and the ball ceiling and ground are all white mm. it's like you know you see in movies how the everything's white mm. you know almost like a daydream thing or you're in heaven mm. look like that and when i can perceive parts of structures of the room um there are no straight things everything is curved as well so there's those um things to it as well but what i've learned is a lot of these crafts not all of them but some of the crafts have been on been on uh manifestation manifestations of group or collective consciousness and then you know i've had the same thing just like other people was you know why do they need crafts if you know they're created by thought. And my understanding is, and it is a brilliant question question because I've had it as well, but my understanding is it it's like a shield against other vibrations. Mm. But then again, let's take it to a next step that I'm trying to understand as well, which in the book of Shiji, which I can go into a bit later with one of the beings I communicate with, I was shown that the higher the level of consciousness you go, though I understand that we've all got different variations of us, mm. you're living multiple lives at the same time. Mm. Once you get to a self-mastery status, tapping back into your, your, the true nature of you and you start to, I guess, reconnect with it, you can break down to one electron and manifest and reform from other electrons anywhere in space and time at any vibration because everything has got a symbiotic relationship. So everything's got an electron component to it. And I'm just trying to understand this. And if there's any scientists that can even understand <laughs> this or go with it, because I've got no idea what I've been told, but this is where I've been shown you can break down to one electron. And then, because everything's got a symbiotic relationship, you can pop out anywhere else. Mm. And that goes, and they'll show me this is when you get to real self mastery status. And this goes past ascended masters. It goes past the angelic realm, which I've been to the geometric light mm. realms. It's beyond all that and you're basically back at source it's like you're you you have that realization that we're all one consciousness and you can manipulate that but then what's created that and this is where i've seen the blueprint of what i can perceive as the universe and everything looked like these purple hue soccer ball type things everything was made of it and i was shown at the universe and then i was sort of taken to like a void area and then they showed me other universes that i couldn't even count and they were the same thing and then it was like all these, all these things you see have got their own planes and dimensions. Mm -hmm. But then this all creates a greater collective consciousness. And I was mm. like, just stop it there because <laughs> yeah. I was still somehow tapped into the human body. Mm. And I'm like, I can't process that. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to process everything else that mm. I'm reconnecting with. Leave it there. So yeah. I know I've, I've rambled on a bit, but it's, everything <laughs> yeah. sort of just goes on from one thing yes. to another. Yeah. So I hope. I'm not, yeah, going <laughs> okay. too over the shop. But. No, that's fine. <laughs> so, well, you mentioned Shiji before. You were contacted by a being. Tell us about how that came about and, and what the contact was all about. Yeah, it continues to this day, and it's more in what I'd call a third eye manner. But other people have seen it with me. Other people have had physical experiences, my partner. But even before her, other people have experienced it. James Gillilands had experiences with her. And what I found out lately is it's another facet of myself that coexists at the same time. Now, in later times, it's, it's come to be shown that she's the, a gatekeeper of the star rope and that all stars are portals. And then you've got portals that are at vortex points on planetary bodies. Now, all suns or stars are connected with portals and then all vortex points, you know, acupuncture points, whatever you want to call it, they're all connected throughout the universe and there's guardian type beings that I talked about before there as well. But then you've got uh, other portals which exist in Orion, Sirius and the Pleiades that are in void points again. And once, if you've got a high level of consciousness, you can access these points to be taken to the geometric and light realms, from my understanding. I'm trying to understand what I'm telling you as well. I've got mm. no idea. All I'm doing is relaying this. 
but then again, when it, when it comes down to it, the the biggest portals within is mm-hmm. connecting with him. But they'll show me different things like that. Or Shiji was with these other beings, but Shiji um, has got different variations, like a, a fifth and seventh dimensional part of her. And then there's a part in the actual Pleiades on a on a planetary body as well. But the main part I connect with is the the seventh dimensional on on a star, um, which is the star Marope. Now the experiences started. Um, I think 2012 January and I think it was actually the first day of that year and before that I had an experience with these light seven foot tall light blue light being a few weeks before it at that time I think I think at that time I'd been on sunrise I I had footage on the news trying to work out what the hell it was I was seeing because I had people with me experiencing these sightings Mm -hmm. and I didn't know what I was seeing I'm like you know what the hell is this and my life I was at the point where you know, I haven't really said it publicly, but I was about to, you know, go through suicide or whatever. I was just like, my life has gone to crap. I've lost friends. I've lost, you know, family think I'm nuts. And then I had an experience with these light blue light beings, which later I've been showing uh, the Elohim slash Anunnaki, depending on the variation. And that we hear about the Archons now. They're a, they evolved down a separate path and once were the Elohim and Anarchy and they've evolved down their way where the parasitic thought forms, shadow type things and they actually have a shadow reptilians as well but I had this experience with one of these beings and sometimes I've been on what I would call a crystal cr- uh, craft as well. It just looks like I'm in a freaking crystal cave. Mm-hmm. No entry or exit. But a couple of weeks after that experience um, I had this lady appear in my lounge room bending over the coffee table with her hands on her knees looking at me in my face. It's like you got 30 to 60 frames in a second of uh, footage. Mm. If you can imagine just bang, all of a sudden this bang's there. And I was, I was packing myself, I jumped back, I didn't know what to think. And there was this telepathic communication and she was beautiful. And what's funny now is it's another facet of me. Mm. And this is where I do guide sessions now with, with people. And a lot of the time with the beings or guides, people connect with their other facets of them. And I'm trying to understand this on, on another level as well. And I think we think linear here, so it's hard to understand, but through a lot of the messages, especially in the first couple of books, she kept on saying, you don't know who you are, remember who you are. And what mm. it is, is I'm her. Mm. And that what I was shown was the more that you evolve, you can off splinter that part of your spirit into something else. And it can almost go on like a fractal, like a, it can mm. just keep going on and mm. on. And a lot of the information has been pertaining really to myself and my journey of, of reconnecting, though there is information in there, whether it's, some of the stuff I've talked about here is not complex and I believe that every, what I'm saying everyone really knows because when I talk to a lot of people unless they're like completely 3D they're like oh that makes sense or you know they've heard something similar so that's when the contact started and a lot of the times I'll be told when crafts are about through what I call thought transfer with the voice too which is really when I've talked to people about it later was there was a female voice which is this female voice in my head Mm. in the younger years mm. but it's like as if there's a speaker in your brain and somebody's talking to a microphone and slowly it vibrates out to the ears there was there was an audible effect to it it wasn't just completely telepathic though it was communicated through telepathy if it makes sense mm. Mm. and i've spoken to other people going i've had the same thing and it's almost like you put your chin on an acoustic guitar and play the string that vibration mm. that goes mm. through um but there's a lot of information there i guess you know yeah, too much to go into but a lot of it was about reconnecting with my own self and mm. and you know again not looking at anyone as a guru that we've all got source or god within however people want to mm. want to communicate mm. that mm. yeah and you've written a book about that yeah, yeah. um mm. one of the books too is uh the book of shiji which to me now is probably the main one if i look at anything that would be the one i'll be looking into because mm. um again i'm trying to fathom that information but it covers all things I think, it, like a little bit of everything. It hasn't got the answers, mm. but it's almost like the spark to the flame that will help people understand something greater. Mm. And I think they've got the answers, you know, mm. within as well, so. What about your other book though, Operation Star Seed? What is that? I got a lot of great feedback about that, a lot of five star reviews. And that went into like this, um, a lot of things, whether it was a lot of the celebrities that have come to me after I went, I got known, uh, about the sexual abuse as a child that I, that I went through um, as well, because I've been public about that. And it was like as if, like, here's, here's somebody that's having experiences. Why is somebody like this having experiences? And it goes into the breakdown, I guess, of me psychologically, mm. the, the drugs and gangs and things like that that I had been through. 
Um, but then it goes into, all right, here's this dude that like this, and then how my whole life changed. And I think it's the pinnacle point where I could, you could give that to another experience and they go, I'm not alone, whether it's mm. symptoms or signs of experiences. Mm. And Shiji kept on popping in. It goes with the experiences because the first lot of books go in a timeline. Mm. And now so much is happening, there's no timeline, though mm. I do date times and um, days for, for craft sightings and things like that. But it goes into what was revealed to me through Shiji was Operation Starseed. Or what I term that really from what was being shown to me, mm. which was how there is a group uh, collective of, of beings that, you know, we can call them the Star Nations or whatever people want to term it. And there is something going on here that's stopping humanity from evolving and that beings have come here and we're, we're actually all contactees in my understanding. I reckon every single thing is an experience that is a facet of one consciousness. But what's happened is those that are, whether not high, that I'd hate to use rank, but those that, that have had a lot of experiences throughout planes and dimensions, they were more geared to come here and help with the, what's going on that screwed up the evolution of, of Earth and humanity. And I call that Operation Starseed because we can't come from the stars, but to help here, you've had to play a part in humanity. Mm. You can't just do it from the outside. And really, the crafts that we're seeing are almost like the the ambos and the helicopters that are military war. You know, you've got the soldiers, which are the mm. star siege, mm. but then you've got the crafts and everything doing other things that it's not going to interfere too much, but that's sort of what, what their job is to stay on the peripheral and, and help out when they can. What, what's really got me and I'm understanding now is that it's not just about Earth what's going on, all humanity, it's what's going on here is affecting all planes and dimensions, not just in this universe but beyond. So it was me, you know, and even looking back at my books, I recommend anyone try to log the best that they can, the date, time, experiences, because what happens when you read back, when I'm writing my books, I'm learning so much. And I even write that in the book. I, I, mm. During the writing of this book, I connected this with this, mm. you know, and otherwise I wouldn't have done it. Mm. Not say, you know, you have to do it, but it's something where I've looked back and gone, God, you know, I wouldn't have noticed this if I hadn't logged it mm. or the way I've done it. Mm -mm. So um, Operation Starseed definitely goes into... Um, a lot of a lot of different things, but um, you know, I guess people are just got to go with whatever they got to go with in terms of, of books. And the really, the only reason I've done the books is, for, like I was told, those who need to read something like this or are guided to it, that's who will get it. It's not for everyone. Mm -hmm. So yeah. What's your? I mean, you must have spoken to a lot of people by now, as well as having your own experiences. But um, I find it seems to me that extraterrestrials can. Um, exist in various realms. They can sh exist in um, our altered states of consciousness. For instance, like um, when people do shamanic journeying, for example, and that's come up for me and a few other people I know. Um, they can exist in uh, realms which we might call the afterlife because I've had a report from a woman who had a, uh, an abduction experience while she had a near-death experience. Um, What's your understanding? Because you've had lots of experiences. Mm. What's your understanding of their ability to, to travel? You know, um, travel across different realms. I know you've just touched on some of that, yeah, yeah. Um, and and perhaps occupy some of those realms. Some of it, I guess, would have to be on a higher self agreement with, with you know whether they can do certain things. But also, again, it comes to the level of consciousness that these beings are at. It's like the more in service and the more service orientated and evolved they are, um, it's like the more they can do things like that. Because like some of these beings, they live in like a hundred lives at one time. Mm. And then like people go, well, that's a lot. Well, then you look at source as a collective and it's all of us, mm. you know, throughout all planes of dimensions. But it is quite possible. Like people can even see with the regression I did with Mary Rodwell, that wasn't just one being communicating through me. That was a whole, like, different... I think there was, like, God, probably nine groups. Mm. And um, they, like, one of them was basically using me as a vehicle that could match my vibration to get the information out. So, you know, it, the more you look into this, the more convoluted it gets, mm. as well as it's really not that complicated as mm. well you know what I mean it's like it's really simple but at the same time I guess with our level of consciousness that we're trying to look at something especially if we're trying to box it mm. or be 3d about it you know and I say it all the time like Albert Einstein said you can't solve a problem with the same level of consciousness that mm. created it so therefore we need a higher level and it's like sometimes we need to totally drop our preconceived notion and any um, I guess control we're trying to have on a situation of understanding and just let go and go right 
how are we going to look at this? Let's look at this totally outside the box. Mm -hmm. But I've had a lot of reports to me of people, um, similar things, like they've even gone out of body and then something else has jumped in and tried to take over their, even their physical body, you know, different things like this, and they're looking down on this happening. So, again, it, it, any what I've learned is anything's possible, and I don't have a black box anymore. I used to have a white and black box. <laughs> now that grey box is continually to be filled, and the white box is only a little bit full, you know what I mean? I don't, because continually to this day, I go, damn, that dude was talking about that four years ago, and I thought mm. it was full of crap. Like David Icke, I thought mm. it was full of crap, and here I am now in a documentary with him, and mm. I've had experiences with reptilian entities, mm. and it hasn't been pleasant, though. That one group was okay. Mm. So this is where, you know, anything is possible, as, mm. as you know. Mm. And, um, yeah. It, it seems that the more you look into the UFO subject, the more you realise you know nothing. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Or <laughs> well, very, very little anyway. Yeah. And yeah. It, it is all interconnected. Like, I've done, I was investigating paranormal uh, reports and cases for years and helped people out with hauntings and got a lot of evidence, of, especially of EVPs, but it's like I'm fascinated and reconnecting with all areas, whether it's consciousness, paranormal, UFOs, um, you name it, it's all interconnected. Mm -mm. So this is where, um, like you know Ray Hernandez, mm. I love talking to him because he goes straight to there and it does link all this up. Mm. And that's why I love chatting to people like him and, and James and yourself mm. as well because it's not just, you know, people try to box things. and. I think people try to be experts in too many areas and it's like, well, hey, just really focus on one or two things, mm. but look at it all, mm. but don't try and be an expert on it mm. because we need experts or I guess nobody's really an expert, but people mm. that are well studied and well read in on certain area. areas. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So um, it is all in the connected. Yeah. Mm. Now I know in your um, Peter Maxwell Slattery story yeah, that I've yeah. watched on YouTube, you mentioned in there something about extraterrestrials being involved in the recycling of souls or perhaps in reincarnation, is that right? Yeah, well, it's hard to explain. It's, there's like this plane that I, that from my understanding, and there's councils and everything, but it's up totally free will what you do. And from my understanding, and like Dolores Cannon has spoken to it and other people who speak of it as well, where Beings, some beings are coming directly from source, but what, what I've been shown is that they're downloaded, it's almost like there's a USB plugged into their soul and or really from you know a plane where all this knowledge is held of everything that ever will and has happened, depending on how you can understand that, they're downloaded lives and programs that are given to give them the training or almost the, the tools to be able to deal with certain incarnations. And at this time there's a lot of new souls that are here directly from source, but there is um, you know, going from life to life, dimension to dimension, experience. Because from my understanding, why we left Source is to experience life, uh, to experience and gain knowledge for many lives, and it mm. all has to be different. So there is that component to it. Um, later on, I have, you know, through the Book of Shiji and talking to people like Barry Littleton, who have had on my show, and, and even you know, a lot more people have come forward to me lately. There is this sort of, you know, people talk about the false light. You know, there's a light, but then there's a false light, and you go to the false one, you know, you recycled. I have been shown how there is two grids. One's a conscious grid that's over Earth, and then there's another grid, which is the archonic grid, which encapsulates a lot of the solar system, and it's a frequency, and there are souls being recycled within that. Mm -hmm. Now, that, that could have, um, you know, and I think it has had huge implications of what's going on, but we've got to remember that even that, the self-serving, is still another facet of ourselves when you look at everything as a collective consciousness. And from my, you know, looking at this, it's almost like we do this to ourselves to get to breaking points so we go to a higher level of consciousness and then evolve again, and then there'll be limitations on that. Mm. Just like there is wars going on, people think I'll go to the fourth or fifth dimension and everything's going to be fine. Well, there's wars going on there too. Mm. And it's not about ascending the way people think. It's about manifesting those realms here and creating a... a a higher level of consciousness here mm. and you know each plane's got the same physicality but um it, it you know again just take what i'm saying with a grain of salt because i'm sure you know i could talk to you in a year or two again and there'll be a lot more information pertaining to that because i'm continually learning mm. right mm. now mm. I, I wouldn't even know 0.001 percent out of a billion percent of what's going on but mm. there's a bit that i am able to correlate with people and share mm. that may you know, spark again, spark that flame for someone that they're going to get something, mm -hmm. and it could teach me a hell of a lot as well. Mm. Um, I was going to ask you too about um, now, since Susie Hansen's book, she talks about the dual soul connection. 
um, and the idea that we have some people have, and maybe star seeds like you mentioned have um, you know their soul and they have an alien uh, part of their soul too and they've come here to do whatever it is they need to do but almost like they're sleepers in our society and they sort of wake up what do, what do you think about that I think that's happening and I've had clients like that as well mm. where what I've noticed last year especially is oh yeah we're in 2016 now but last <laughs> year especially and just a little bit beforehand I had a lot of people and then <clears throat> the clients and the Arcturians were coming in and these people just started waking up it was almost like for those that have got a strong Arcturian connection a light switch was turned on mm. not saying that there are there's a lot of people that have had experience with the Arcturians but it's almost like a mass group that has spread out over the whole globe had to awaken then and continue to now um, even with myself, I, I highly resonate with Orion, Sirius and the, and the Pleiades. But what my understanding is, is that you imagine just a ball and there's all these spikes coming off this ball and this ball is like a cell of source and all that is and that you're a cell of it, almost like a cell of my body. Um, you know, when you put them all together, creates this, this body as a, as a collective. Uh, it's multidimensional and multifaceted and is living whatever lives at the same time. And what it, what it really is, is that you're tapping into other facets of you and some of you will resonate more with on the human experience. I could be, you know, seventh dimensional, wherever, and I'm starting to think there's more like one dimension with all these different vibrations in it. That's mm. my, what I'm thinking. Mm. But it's almost like I could be, say, seventh dimensional somewhere else and I'll more resonate with a Pleiadian life or a Syrian life than the Earth life because mm. they're closer to much you know, the tools for what I need for that lot, if mm. that makes any sense. Mm. Mm. So um, I think there is something to what she's saying, but, and again, um, I think her, like me, we're continuing to evolve. So, you know, I'd like actually to read that to, to gain some knowledge and have some understanding because, again, it's all about networking and sharing. Mm. Mm. Now, you mentioned before Ascension, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, and there's a teaching that in our history, when various humans have developed to a point, they make... Uh, their ascension and they become masters and of of a type and in in their level anyway and in turn they help humanity on the collective consciousness of humanity uh, to evolve. But um, just like angels, wouldn't it be more logical to say that perhaps those beings that uh, in that teaching called ascended masters would be extraterrestrials? An example is say Jesus Christ. Yeah, well, I've had experiences with a lot of these different types of beings, and what I'm understanding is we've all got a facet of ourselves that is in the angelic realm, mm. and then in these different vibrations. And what I've shown is that the part of the human experience is a self-mastery one, and once you realise who and what we are, and I'm trying to understand that, because apparently we can do things that a lot of these other beings can't, mm. is, you know, it's about reconnecting and getting to that self-mastery status. And from there, you go into service mode, but they said it's not just... You know, again, how I talk about that ball with all these offshoots of all these lives. It's not just about doing it in one life. It's mm. about doing it in as many facets of your soul as you can. Mm. Um, so when I look at all this, like, for example, these in, in this vibration and just out of it, these star systems exist that we see in the night sky. But you get to a level of vibration where all that breaks down that reality and everything's geometric and light. Mm. And all this is just nothing. Mm. And that's what you're dealing with there. Mm. And again, a facet of me is in those realms as well. And then a facet is here. And we hear about the rainbow light body. There's a part of me that's in Orion that he looks like an old man, but I'll show in the ascended version, he was a rainbow being. We hear about the rainbow body. Mm. And I've only connected this lately when I heard about the rainbow body, you know, the Tibetan rainbow body or whatever people go on mm -hmm. about. So this is where I don't throw everything out. I used to think, oh, ascended masters and archangels, this and that, whatever you want to go on about. But again, now I'm going, I just don't know what to think. Because mm. I'm reconnecting with different facets of myself, which, all, which I would say is angelic. And I think each single person on this planet, they've got a facet of them that is at that status. Mm. And again, it's, it's, it's filtering down. And again, the human body... Um, and the brain is capable of so much, I think we only use, you know, just under 10%. And we only see 0.005% of physical matter and only a small spectrum of that, which is the visible light. Mm -mm. Then you've got infrared and gamma ray and x-ray and all this stuff. But what's happening is we're having a multi-dimensional experience and only a facet of that is connected to the human body and trying to perceive all that with the level of brain power we're using now is so mm. hard mm. Um, and that's why I talk so quick and I'm trying to ram all this <laughs> stuff in there because I'm trying to explain what I'm experiencing on a multi-dimensional level mm. 
while using a level of consciousness that's, you know, not really matching it at mm. this state. And mm. that's why things are the way they are here, because we're, we're all doing that. But, mm. um, and yeah. I, I think we're struggling with concepts too that are that are sort of coming to us now anyway. Yeah. They? They're like not concepts that we've grown up with. Definitely. Like, even for so long, I didn't tell anybody about how a lot of the time, not a lot of the time, but some of the time when I'm filming a craft, I'm on the craft looking at myself mm. in, my, in my head. Mm. And the first time, a few times I did that, I broke down and cried. I was like, I can't, and I couldn't tell everyone that there what what was going on to me because I'm thinking they're just not going to understand. Mm. Um, so this is where it we're just reconnecting and, and we're all doing the best that we can, especially in in this field. And I think you know, right now we've all just got to network the best that we can, and we're all each other's guides, really, in physical mm. form. Here, we're teaching each other. Mm. And there's a there's a component in the UFA community uh, of people who. Um, have a tendency to want to spiritualise the UFO subject. Um, why do you think that is? You know, I know I know some of those people have had experiences, and that also becomes um, that's another aspect to it too. Is that their experiences that they're transformational experiences, and it heads them more towards their spiritual nature. But in general, I think um, there is that component to it um, that sort of people feel an urge to go towards. Yeah, I, I don't get it. And it's almost like a cult thing. It's, a lot of it makes us look like idiots too. Like seriously, it's just, it, it puts a cult mentality, it puts like a a religious taint on it. And I think we need a balance of spirituality with technology and everything else. And look, it really is a, a soul journey. It's a huge soul journey, but I don't know why that is. I do think some of it though is parasitic thought forms or some, something of a self-serving nature trying to manipulate from behind the scenes to make it look that way as well and mm. to turn it that way mm. so there's still another form of control I guess you know that might be a lot for some people and I used to think you know a lot of stuff was crazy but you know I've experienced it now so I can't say that but that's what I sort of think on some level is that some of it is a manipulation type thing because mm. anything that takes you from reconnecting with the with yourself that's when I question it. Mm -hmm. Because when when people are getting on a guru status or whatever, that's like, no, nah, this is not what this is about. Mm. And when you talk to any experiencer like you know, it's usually about, from not usually, a lot of the time, about people reconnecting with their themselves and learning about who they are mm. rather than anything else. Mm. Mm. It's about their own heritage and their own soul journey and their own background on, on a soul level, multi-dimensional level. That's why I sort of question a lot of these things when they pop up because I'm just like, that just doesn't, doesn't hit the heart. Mm, mm. So, yeah, it, I wish it wasn't that way. Yeah, it, um, but I do think that the people in the UFO community are more socially conscious than a lot of other people, mainstream society. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Like, if you look at the UFO community, um, especially compared to, I'll say, let's say the 80s, I can remember... Uh, some of the UFO groups looked at Dolores Cannon as crazy, and then here they are 20 years later, and they're using hypnotherapy. And th you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, so they've, mm -hmm. they've evolved, but you go to any U UFO group meeting, and it's fantastic. I haven't been to a lot of them, especially because of the location we're at and where I was before them, but um, they're, they're into health, they're into consciousness, they're into well-being, they're into all these different things. It's not just about lights in the sky. Mm. It, it affects every facet of their life. Mm. And you can talk to people about what they eat and what they do, exercise, spiritual practices, meditating, you know, mm. all these things come into it. Mm. So um, that's one thing I can say is it's, um, and I, I reckon in Australia we're sort of ahead of a lot of other groups around the world from what I've seen with UFO groups in terms of here, you go to a UFO group meeting and people cover it anything and everything mm. you go to some other places in the world and they're really nuts and bolts or limited or they want to stick to the crafts and the nuts mm. and bolts mm. so i think um you know ufo groups are good in that sense that um it's a platform for networking as well as learning and mm. that's what we need more of and draws people from all walks of life it too. does yeah. Jeez, i met some amazing people that mm. i got you know I go, geez, if I was still rapping or whatever, God, I wouldn't have met people like this and just how, you know, it gets you teary sometimes going, look, mm. you know, just the thought patterns and paths they put you on on a journey of just self-realisation and thought. Mm. You wouldn't have it in a normal job. Mm. So so on that issue of, of social concern, um, where do you see uh, our society, maybe a whole civilization, but certainly in the Western world, um, where we are in our own social evolution? Well, I was saying that this is the fourth time that what's going down is going down. And it's not the end all or be all of anything, but I'm seeing in my own 
understanding like a divide, a divide that are, for those that are ready to move on and those that are ready to just stay in, you know, happy the way they are. And there's no right or wrong way with it. It's just, it, it is what it is. But if we look at even te technologically how far things have come in, you know, the last hundred years with space exploration of what we're told in the public domain, though I know that there's a lot of um, secret space stuff going on, we can see how much we've developed technologically. But look, let's, let's look at the last 10 years, how, you know, I guess spiritually, in a sense, we've advanced. You know, religions are becoming not so much thought about these days, whether it's Muslim or Christianity or Judaism, whatever it is. People are starting to look to the God within and think about that rather mm. than, you know, putting things in a box. Mm. But this is happening exponentially quick and fast and hard. So there is definitely like an uprising. Now, we hear, you know, for the last... 30, 40, 50 years, we're all getting sent into the fifth dimension, this and that. It's just what the beings have told me, it's not going to happen how people think. Mm. It's just not, and it's more about bringing it here mm. and changing here. Because what I was showing is once we change here, those that are ready to evolve on other levels are going to go to where they've got to go as well. And again, I, I, I don't know how this is going to happen, mm. but it's not going to be what people think. That's mm. all I've been told. So is it like bringing heaven to earth then? Well, it really is. It's us grounding it. They're grounding it and manifesting it here. It's like, like I always say, you know, you can't, ch don't change outside of yourself, change within and that will project outside of yourself. Mm. It, it, everything is just like a holographic projection. Everything, if we look at a, a holograms, you know, even now, a small tiny contains part of the whole. Mm. And we are a small part of that whole and we contain the whole. Mm. Mm. So it's really just, I think we're on the fringes of that. Mm. And how it's going to come into fruition, I've got no idea, but I, I reckon it's going to be bigger and beautiful than what we can even think we mm. can try and make up mm. for it. Yeah. Now, it's easy to get uh, distracted and confused for people who enter the UFO community and start looking closely at the UFO subject. Very easy. And I see a lot of people do that. Um, and they seem to, to me, they seem to miss the real meaning of what extraterrestrials, you know, extraterrestrial reality is what you know what is it what's the real meaning for you i think it's beyond extraterrestrial mm. i think it's like it's bigger and beautiful than what people can imagine and i take people out to see you know sometimes you know actually we've been blessed like 100 percent of the time for crafts or something that happened during sky watch or something we're very lucky with that and like i say to people be careful what you wish for because this is so real that your life will change and we've had people from all walks of life experience something with us and they've gone on their own journey which is what this is about is going on their own journey not putting yourself in a box and being a little afraid me of if i don't do this well i'm going to lose my friggin you know my payment and if i don't do this job well then i'm going to lose this it's like we've been put in a box and told what to do and people don't even realize because it's done that well but when you look at this ET reality, whatever people want to call it, what this is is about reconnecting with the God within and growing and evolving. That's what it's about. And I'm sure there's a lot more, but that's what I can say in the human body. Mm -hmm. If I was outside this body here, I bet you, and you, you would know it. Mm -hmm. I think we know everything outside of this body because there's like a frequency, source frequency, where all that is and ever will be, it's there and we've got access to it. But in a body, it's, it's a bit different, difficult to get to. But I think it's more about us as individual people like i said this is more about us learning about who we are individually but what's happening now is it's going from an individual concept to a collective concept mm. which is why we do the sky watches too is to have contact or start it on a collective level but before you do collective stuff you've got to deal with your own crap mm, mm. you know what i mean so people think you know they want to experience this or experience that half of the time when i have an experience i'm still crap myself the first few seconds until i know what i'm dealing with mm. And even then, you don't even always know what you're dealing with because you don't know if it's honest. But I go with my heart, and the first thing that comes to mind, and I'm usually pretty pretty on par. But I think this is more right now. What this is about is people learning who they are outside the body on a on a spiritual level and a physical level, and what they're experiencing here with the human experience, and then going to the collective level. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's I get, hope I'm answering that the best. Yeah, you know, you can yeah, understand that's fine. That. Yeah. So well. well What's your advice then for people who are entering the UFO community now? What would be your, say, top top three tips? Um, if somebody sounds like they're full of crap, I'll put it in the grey box. Don't throw it out because there is times of being proven wrong. But I was talking to you about this before, was that there is so much noise right now that everyone's forgetting the signal. Mm. 
and to me, I've thought about you know leaving and doing other things because it's hurting me so much that I don't want to be promoting information that's misinformation or somebody's fantasy. And again, they could be so right, and it just doesn't resonate with me, and I'm the idiot. You know, mm -hmm. I, I don't know, but I think people need to vent, do discernment. Do actual research, don't go, you know, if you see something on before it's news, don't believe it. Go and see if they've got a link to the original source, go and do some investigation. People forget before what I've been doing now, I used to go and drive three, six hours, investigate a home and the family and the people, and I've got a counselling degree and other tools that I've used to help them on some level. And not every bump in the night is a poltergeist or an ET. It's, there's other things going on. So I'd say do some due diligence and investigation. And three, be ready for your life to be ripped out from underneath you in every <laughs> single facet of your life, from health, exercise, friends, social life, family, everything you can think of to be turned upside down. Because once you know this is real, and it is real, uh, you you perceive the outside world totally different from what you can you know fathom before then. But again, you know, do the research. Don't throw anything out. Like I said, just don't throw everything out. Put it in the grey basket because one day it might have something to it. So mm -hmm. that's sort of. I hope that's all right advice. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah. It's helpful, I'm sure. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so, so yeah. So in your personal journey, what have you learned for Peter? Well, I've learned, I've learned a lot about myself. I've learned about even little things like how intense I am, my energies, um, how, what I, one of the biggest things I've learned personally, and it brought me to tears when I had this experience because I actually had an experience with Kuan Yin and then the Anunnaki and other beings, and it was like a life review. And I was being shown that what I do affects everyone. And I was brought to tears. I, I, it was so haunting. Mm -hmm. But then it was like on a negative taint. And then it flipped to the positive that everything you do affects everyone. There was mm -hmm. two types of um, a tone to it, if you can, energetic tone to it, of what I was being shown. Because, and I guess because of how pu public I've been and how in the public eye I am, I get attacked a lot more in hate mail. But then there's so much people that are grateful for it. Mm -hmm. And not, that's not to make this physical, but in this human experience and even going out of the human experience, when I look down on this all, it's not just me, but how you affect me and your partner and your friends and community and a soul and everyone else. We all affect each other. And that's where even the slightest thought that's not in a positive light or helpful for someone, that can manifest and affect people, even if it's not said. Because mm. a lot of our body language is, you know, the communication, not talking. So that was one of the biggest things I've learned about me is that what I do affects everyone. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So where to from here for you? I don't know, like, I've, I'm just going by, I've learned to not control things anymore. Mm. I've learned that that's, that's when you evolve and you grow and you just got to go with the synchronicities and signs. Mm. Well, you told me a year ago I'd be on tour with James Gilliland and my partner now going up and down the East Coast and going to America, I'd be like, but, and it's not about, you know, all that, mm. but it's what happens when you surrender and let go. As mm. long as it's in a positive light. Um, and the information is fruit, fruitful, I go with it. And this is what can happen. Things can happen that you can't even imagine. You know, years ago I was single in a flat and I thought I was done with women, I'm done with work, I'm done with society. I wanted to be a hermit crab, but here I am now out out there. doing the opposite. Mm -hmm. So this is where, um, you know, I know that people are having hard times out there and especially if your experiences are starting, which you're starting to realise you have been having them all along. But, you know, try and go to groups like Shells or, you know, email the nearest researcher or someone that can put you in contact with somebody that you can even network or talk to. Even those um, experiencer groups where people just go and talk, mm. they're mm. great because it gives you somebody you can talk to rather than your family or friends that think you're nuts. So, mm. Mm. yeah. That's important. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Mm. Well, thank you, Peter. That's, That's been all right. very enlightening. Yeah, thank you for having <laughs> me and keep up the great work. You've been doing this for so long and I know you've helped so many people so keep up the awesome work. Oh. I know everyone appreciates it. Thank you. And where can people contact you? I can go to petermaxwellsattery.com and everything's there. So, yeah, just go there. Oh, great. And also eCity Oh, yeah, eCityAustralia.org. Yeah. I've got that now as well. I forget about that at the moment. So, yeah, go there as well. Yeah. Lots All of right, stuff. Great. Thanks for joining cool. us. Thank you.